Good morning, and welcome to our Sunday worship service. I'm Molly Smith. I'm Ryan Yuri. <laughs> and we will be your service leaders today. Lauren Brown also helped prepare this service, but was unfortunately unable to make it today. But you'll get to hear from him by video later on. I've been at member of the UUCP for about eight years now, and um, I've been very taken with it. I can't tell you how nice it is to be in a church where they welcome you as you are, and they don't expect you to believe anything at all. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, I've now become a member of the lay pastoral ministry team, and uh, then most recently, of the Worship for Transformation team. And uh, just looking around, I, th I think most of you probably already know me, but my name's Ryan and I've been in this church for most of the past decade. I have been on the board and taught OWL and was an employee for a while until this last June. And so I've kind of got my fingers in every part of the church at some point. So I'm very happy to be here on this uh, our Pride Sunday service, and uh, look forward to uh, exploring with you. I'd like to extend a special welcome to all who are joining us for the first time. We're very glad you are here. If you've come in person, you should have received a welcome packet with an information card in it. If you fill that out and drop it in the offering basket, we will be in touch to support you in finding your way into our community. If you're joining us online, there's a link in our website to an electronic version of that same card. Our welcoming committee members have yellow name tags and can answer any questions or point you toward additional information. Whether you are new or not, please consider staying for coffee and conversation after the service either downstairs in our fellowship hall or in our Zoom room. And now, let's say our words of welcome together. Whether this is your first or your thousandth Sunday with us, and whether you strolled, rolled, zoomed, ran, or danced in, we are glad you chose to join us. We are one people of many beliefs, identities, origins, sexualities, and genders. All are welcome here. Now we will take a moment to say hello across the technical divide. First, we're going to show the people joining us on Zoom. If you're at home, please turn on your camera. Now, people at home, wave. Now, people who are attending the service in our building, it's your turn to wave. Do we have announcements this morning? Apparently, we do not have announcements. We preface our service by acknowledging our church was built on the ancestral homelands of the Nimipu, called Nez Perce by the French-speaking traders, the Palouse, and the Stitsum, called the Coeur d'Alene. Let us pause and remember that we live on ground that is sacred, ground that was stolen, ground that cries out for justice and for responsible stewardship. May our remembering help us find the courage to do our part to restore wholeness to the earth and all her peoples. We're hoping that folks joining us on Zoom have a chalice or a candle to light and something to light it with. Let's light our chalices together. In the light of truth and the warmth of love, we gather to seek and seek to share.
good morning. Your service leaders today, Molly and Lauren and myself, are members of the new shared worship ministry team. And we work hand in hand with Reverend Elizabeth to support her ministry and also to plan services when she's away, like today. Now you may have noticed that for each of the past couple of services, we've focused on a specific aspect of that service. Two weeks ago, the focus was on the meditation. Last week, it was on the chalice lighting. And this week, we've decided to focus on joys and sorrows. Now our goal in doing this is to try and bring a sense of mindfulness and intention to parts of the service that might be at risk of becoming formulaic or routine. I like to think of the difference between a habit and a ritual. So a habit is something we do over and over in the exact same way because we want to pay less attention to it. We want to experience it less. A ritual, we do over and over and over in the exact same way because we want to experience it more. We want to be more mindful of it. So we would just want to make sure our Sunday services remain a ritual and an experience of depth in a sacred space. So this new team wasn't formed only to fill in when Reverend Elizabeth is away. We're also working together with her to bring new ideas and approaches to our Sunday worship so that we can keep it relevant, keep it engaging, while also retaining our most important traditions. So today, we're going to be experimenting with some different approaches to joys and sorrows in the spirit of finding new ways to approach what is essential to this ritual. New ways for each of you to share your whole selves in community, to be seen and held, to be celebrated, to be vulnerable yet safe, and to be loved precisely as you are. Today is also our Pride Sunday service, which dovetails really nicely with this theme of celebrating being fully who we are in community. Pride is, among other things, a reminder to all of us of the better world that's possible when every person is free to share all aspects of who they are without fear. So today, let's explore the role of sharing and vulnerability in building our beloved community. But first, let's, uh, let's sing together. Our opening hymn is When Our Heart is in a Holy Place.
Thank you, Fran. For those of you able to make a financial contribution, the logistics will be uh, appearing on the screen in a moment. We typically give away all of the cash from our Sunday offering to local charities whose missions align with our values, a program we call Month of Sundays. This month, the recipient is Pullman Planned Parenthood, whose mission is to provide exceptional reproductive and complementary health care services, honest education, and fearless advocacy for all. To donate, please in indicate Month of Sundays on your check or from the online drop-down menu. In the spirit of love and for the continuing work of this church, we will now take some time to practice generosity together. Now is the time in our service when we lift up our joys and sorrows. The sharing of joys and sorrows is a sacred ritual in our community. And today we're going to explore those experiences and so much more. Joys and sorrows touch the deepest parts of us, make up the warped and weft of our lives. But there are other threads that reach perhaps as deep. To paraphrase Joseph Campbell, a noted scholar and teacher of mythology, we humans are born into the field of space and time and into duality, pairs of opposites, joy and sorrow, hope and fear, life and death, hurt and healing, beauty and horrific ugliness. That's how it is in our universe. So go ahead and get comfortable. Take a few deep breaths and check in with your heart. Before we begin with the next part, did everyone have a chance to uh, select a colored stone. If you're joining us online, I encourage you to follow with us in your imagination. Or if you have something in near to hand to substitute, please feel free to do so. Think of a joy you have known, also a sorrow. 
Maybe you had a puppy that was the cutest you'd ever seen, and years later you said goodbye to your old friend. Or a hummingbird landed on your finger, but you gave up a cherished dream. Remember the feelings you had in those moments and hold them together. Feel how they stress you so much you feel the joy and sadness of others. And now, those of you who chose a dark blue stone, please bring it to the front and drop it in the vase here. We all have hopes, small or large. Think of a hope you hold. Maybe your hope is small. I hope it won't rain on my picnic. Or maybe your hope is enormous, like world peace. Once you have your hope, think of something you fear. No fear is too small or too large. You could be afraid of spiders, or you could fear the upcoming surgery you know you need. Think of your own hope and fear and feel them together. Feel how they connect you with others who also hope and fear. And now, if you're holding a light blue stone, please place it in the vase. Bring to mind something that heals you, the natural world, or smiles, or a special place, anything that helps you feel whole. And also think of what hurts, sharp words, news of brutality, or maybe even negative thoughts. Feel the hurt and the healing together, and understand that we all encounter hurt and we all seek healing. If you have a green stone, it's your turn to place it in the vase. What is beautiful to you? 
We all see the world differently, yet we all experience beauty. Your beauty might not be visual. It could be a bird call, or the taste of chocolate, or the feeling of a warm blanket, or the scent of violets. And then there's always ugliness, a loud noise, litter, a dog poop pile. Think of the two together, how they make up the everyday world we live in. And if you have a yellow stone, those stones go to the base now. Now we'll consider life and death. We are alive in this world, but none of us will leave it that way. Feel your experiences of life and death, how life depends on death and yet life returns. We all eat something, and in turn, we're all on the table. Life and death dance together, and we dance this dance too. If you have an orange stone, please place it in the vase and make the final color of our rainbow of experience. Joy, sorrow, and all the other experiences we've considered today make us human. And when we open enough to share them, they make us a community, a beloved community. Amen and blessed be. You might have noticed by the order of the colors, we were hoping to form a rainbow as the stones <laughs> stacked up. Uh, now we know next time use a skinnier face. Um, but otherwise, I think that went really well. So today's meditation is May We Live the Spirit of Pride by Elizabeth Ketchum. And if you would like to join me for the refrain, that line that gets repeated on each slide, please feel free to do so. With gratitude for the freedom to be our true, authentic selves, may we live the spirit of pride. Okay, Sam. Let the slides catch up. <laughs> With the courage that comes from challenging fear, may we live the spirit of pride. With sorrow for those who could not be here with us today, and in honor of those who died of AIDS or lost their lives, may we live the spirit of pride. With grief for those whose pain was unbearable and who left us too soon, may we live the spirit of pride. Looking ahead to the justice still withheld, may we live the spirit of pride. With the confidence that a sense of community banishes isolation and loneliness, may we live the spirit of pride. With the rainbow flag flying high, a sense of beloved community among us, and the joy that comes from making new connections. May we live the spirit of pride. We will now take a minute to meditate together in silence, 
and I invite you to use this time to reflect on the statements that are shown on this slide. All of who you are is sacred. All of who you are is welcome. do believe if the UU Church had a slogan, that would probably be it. Now let us enjoy the gift of music together. Today, Marcus has agreed to lead us in singing Turn, Turn, Turn by Pete Seeger. Um, and I'm going to guess most of you probably already know this one. So let's enjoy singing together. Singer, folk singer named Pete Seeger wrote this song, and uh, he took it from, it's actually much older, that, because he took it from the biblical book of Ecclesiastes, the Old Testament, so it's actually accredited, it goes back quite a ways, uh, it's accredited to King Solomon, who, who apparently wrote it and it was recorded <laughs> maybe 3,000 3, years ago. Recorded on parchment. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, please join me in singing this old song. And I think, you know, the thing about this song is it really speaks through the centuries about uh, the passages of life we all go through, you know, joys and sorrows. So it covers the whole gamut, I think, of that. The pigs sing in the key of C. Welcome to join me. To everything. Time to build, the time to break down, time to dance, the time to mourn, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together. To everything, there is a season. time for every purpose under heaven. A time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, a time of peace. A time that you may embrace, a time to time for every purpose under heaven. A 
Return to gain, return to lose, return to reap, return to sow. A time for love, a time for hate, in time of peace, I swear it's not too late. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Marcus. I'm guessing I'm probably not the only one who's more familiar with the Birds cover of that song than the original Pete Seeger, but uh, that was nice. That was so good. Thank you. So now, uh, as we mentioned in the beginning, Lauren Brown did help put this service together, but unfortunately could not be here today. But uh, he was gracious enough to pre-record a message and share it with us. So now let's take a couple of moments to reflect on pride and community with Lauren. this church service today, we are exploring the power of sharing joys and sorrows. This weekend is Pride in Moscow. Happy Pride! So I wanted to kind of combine those two subjects and reflect a little bit on the power of sharing joys and sorrows, specifically in the LGBTQ plus community. As a queer person myself, I have had several really significant and meaningful experiences where I have connected with other queer folks through sharing of sorrows and sharing of joy. When I think about sharing sorrows, I think about opportunities where I have been privileged to hear other LGBTQ plus individuals talk about rejection as they've shared their stories where they were rejected or kicked out of clubs, churches, families, where they were told that because of who they are and how they love that they were not allowed, that they were not accepted, that they were not loved. I think about shared sorrows in our community, and I think about it in terms of shared grief. Whether we're thinking about, in our history, the 1980s and the 1990s and the beginning of the AIDS epidemic when people were talking about the grief of losing loved ones to AIDS, or in thinking about the shared grief of losing the supportive or affirming family that you hoped you would have, or losing the church that you were so much a part of growing up, but now doesn't feel like home to you. I feel like there's so much power as we share those stories together. When I've had a chance to share some of my experiences growing up, when I've been able to hear the stories of others, even though our stories are not exactly the same, and there may be so many other factors that impact it, such as race, socioeconomic status, where this happened, was this in the United States, was this in an international country? Although our stories are different, there is a thread of it that feels very similar, and that thread connects us. And I think that's why it's so powerful to share those, sor those sorrows, to speak them out loud, to share our stories. And I think it also offers us a foundation for seeing the need for continual change, the need for social justice, the need for creating safe spaces where we can be truly ourselves. I also appreciate that it isn't all about shared sorrow. We have our moments of joy too. When I think about sharing of joy in the queer community. I think about unity and liberation through celebration. I think about it in terms of our pride parades and our art and sequins and light and rainbows and having spaces 
where people can dance and sing and connect and be so authentically themselves. I feel queer joy in my heart when I see someone just owning it, just being exactly who they are, and especially if they have the opportunity to do, to do that in a space that feels safe, where they can feel celebrated by their community, I think there's something so powerful in that. And just as we experience each time there's pride in Moscow and we see our community come together, I hope that we continue to build a world where we can have more queer joy, where we can see more of that celebration, because I think it's connected not just to happiness, but it's also connected to liberation. It's con connected to that continual effort to create a world where everyone can be truly themselves. And so in reflecting on this topic of today, I just have thought how powerful it is to have our sorrows and our joys shared both within our community where we maybe feel a sense of family or feel at home, but then also sharing those stories outside of that community and helping tell our stories, helping talk about our trauma, but also our triumphs, talking about our sorrow and also our joy. Happy Pride, and thank you for letting me share my thoughts. Thank you, Lauren, wherever you are. The sharing of our joys and sorrows is truly a sacred part of the liturgy of this church. I, I think a lot of us consider it to be one of the most important parts of the service. I think for one thing, it's very personal. A lot of what we learn and listen to up here can be kind of abstract and distant. And the joys and sorrows we get to experience more directly, more intimately. It also gives us each a chance to participate and be part of the service, not just passive listening, but really the service is ab about all of us, not just the person in front of the mic. And it gives us an opportunity for the kind of connection that can be difficult to find in other places in our lives. I mean, how often do you get an opportunity like that to just be heard, to be deeply known, to take what's inside and put it out there and have other people deeply listen and care? to be vulnerable and yet still be accepted. I mean, sharing these things on Facebook just isn't quite the same. But why joys and sorrows specifically, I wondered as we were putting this together. I mean, I've always loved the saying that a joy shared is a joy doubled, a sorrow shared is a sorrow halved. I like that quote so much I used it three months ago in a different service. But it's also worth asking how else we might want to be seen and heard in community. What else might we want to share? Now, Molly already led us through joys and sorrows, hopes and fears, healings and hurtings, beauty and ugliness, and life and death. But what about worries or concerns? What about needs and requests? Apologies, confessions, regrets, dreams or ponderings, experiences of wonder, there's so much inside each of us that wants to come out and be seen. Now, of course, if every one of us attempted to share everything inside us each and every week, uh, I'm pretty sure one service would last till the next one started. So that's probably not the best strategy. Also, there's some things we might want to share that don't fit into neat categories, and they might not even be able to be put into words. So today we're going to try an experiment. And this time, instead of thinking about joys and sorrows, I want you to think more broadly. What's in your heart right now? What part of you needs to be seen or heard? Now, as you think on that, I'll direct your attention up here to the front. You'll see uh, we have big sheets of paper. We have art supplies, candle, water, stones, a singing bowl, uh, a gong. Um, and lots of other stuff over there, and of course the microphone as well. So I'd invite you as you feel so moved to come forward and express whatever you find when you look inside and express it in whatever way makes the most sense to you. And if this gets a little chaotic, so much the better. How do you want to be held in loving community? How do you like to be seen or heard? 
Now, folks online, you'll have to make do with whatever you have available, but if you'd like to be projected up on the big screen, just send a message to Sam, and we'll try to, try to get it figured out. Um, also, as far as the confessions go, if it's anything that might result in legal issues, uh, maybe schedule a one-on-one -on -one with Reverend Elizabeth. <laughs> this might not be the place. Um, and of course, silence is also a way to express ourselves. So if you wish to stay where you are and just observe, that's of course always okay. So please, as, as you feel moved to share, come forward and, and share with us. Marissa asked, this isn't a one-by-one one thing, right? No, it's not. <laughs> so feel free just to come up. And like I said, if you want to share into the microphone, feel free. If you just want to put it up on the paper, go ahead. Yes, it'll all be over here in the corner. I hadn't even thought of sharing hunger at this. <clears throat> hey, um, so like I said, we don't want to be here till we share everything we possibly can, because it would take forever. But I'm going to leave everything out here, so even after service, if you want to come up and blow some bubbles, draw a picture, play with the clay, I'll leave it all out there. And if you, you know, you'd like to do that during service on a regular basis, volunteer for RE. They get to do this all the time. <laughs> so in, in the Gospel of Thomas, it states, if you bring forth what is within you, what you bring forth will save you. If you do not bring forth what is within you, what you do not bring forth will destroy you. And for those playing along at home, I used that three months ago, too. Next week, we'll be back to lighting candles of joy and sorrow like usual. But as our community continues to grow and to evolve, I hope you'll think on what it is that draws us together and how else might we share our inner worlds with one another and so build community here. We don't have to wait for a pride celebration to experience the liberation and the jubilation that come from being fully who we are without apology. We can start today. We can do it here. We can do it together. And eventually, maybe we can experience that kind of fullness, that joyous freedom in every aspect of our lives. So may it be. Our closing hymn today is Just As Long As I Have Breath. Yes, please rise if in heart or spirit. Thank you so much. So thank you for all the gifts that you've brought today. Thank you for your broken hearts. Thank you for any joy you brought. Thank you to those who brought fears to be comforted. 
Thank you for your exhaustion, your anxiety, your sadness, and your kindness. When we say all are welcome here, it's not just that all people are welcome here. It also means that all of you, all of each and every one of you is welcome here and loved and held. All your flaws and insecurities and secret wounds and smoldering anger, all your hopes, joys, laughter, and song, your voice, your presence, your beautiful faces. We welcome high tides and low here, doldrums and hurricanes. We welcome burning skies and silent snows, golden sunrises and starlit nights, teeming reefs and barren deserts. All are welcome. All of each of us is welcome here. And not just welcome, but appreciated and welcomed and honored and loved. Thank you for your sorrow. Thank you for your pain. Thank you for your frustration and confusion and foreboding. Here you're wanted, here you're loved, and here you belong. Please join me in singing our musical benediction, There is a Love. Please join me in the words for extinguishing the chalice. We extinguish this chalice that it might go gently in our hearts. May it guide our paths as we leave this place. May it guide our way until we are together again. And now let's go out into our universe and fully give ourselves to everything that life gives us. Also, join us for coffee downstairs and come back next Sunday. <laughs>